So how many of you are familiar with uh, green assets like carbon credits? Please raise hand. Wow, that's great. You're a very smart uh, audience with <laughs> very broad views because uh, actually while presenting uh, this uh, outstanding solution, I always experience problems because some of the audience are very familiar with crypto uh, and the other one is familiar with climate issues but not at all familiar with crypto. So uh, today we have the perfect match and we have both. That's great. Uh, let's move on. Um, yeah, so uh, this is a project, it's called DAO IPCI, which stands for the Decentralized Autonomous Organization, Integral Platform for Climate Initiatives. Uh, it's kind of a, a little bit nerdy name, but it's actually doing an amazing thing. Uh, it is in fact, right now, delivering uh, the only blockchain infrastructure for the various climate finance markets and their players. Uh, so, uh, here you see uh, the consequences of climate change here in Switzerland. Uh, the glaciers, glaciers are melting and uh, uh, you see they're trying to cover those into, in, in sheets in order to prevent the melting. And unfortunately, uh, global treaties like Kyoto and Paris Agreement are not coping with the climate change and national states are also failing to do so. Uh, and our only hope here is uh, new technologies and bright people who can implement them. So, uh, what's the way to uh, combat climate change and pollution? How can we transfer from the old uh, uh, resources-oriented economy to the green sustainable cities? Uh, wh what is the answer, can you guess? Automation. Um, yes, and also it's, it's money. Uh, <laughs> we actually need to price pollution. And this goes to the uh, original ideas of Ronald Coase, uh, who introduced the idea of transactional costs. And then he developed a lot of research uh, related to uh, transactional costs and how these costs should be dealt with uh, in order to reduce the damage to the third party. Because when we are buying goods or services, we are making uh, the indirect damage to the third party, like to the whole world. We are releasing climate uh, carbon emissions and we are contributing to all those economic problems. So what we need to do and what actually worked well in some cases, like uh, the US, uh, uh, acid rain uh, market and some other good cases is that you need to include those the price of externalities into uh, your economic system into your market so this is actually uh, how uh, United Nations see the implementation of blockchain to harness those negative externalities and to um, actually uh, use our resources in a better way and implement those concepts into our economic activities. So there are uh, climate projects that reduce uh, emissions and there are also industry processes that actually release emissions. So what we need to do is to monitor uh, negative and positive externalities. We need to report them, verify them, and then uh, within special markets or market systems, we are trading them, purchasing, and there is a special uh, climate finance uh, function is the retirement of uh, various green assets. So that's the slide provided by the UN, UNFCCC, for dealing with the climate issues. That's how they see uh, the implementation of blockchain. And this has actually uh, matches our project because uh, we are, uh, using blockchain to transform those markets and to uh, bring them to, to the blockchain. Uh, we're not substituting any current market member like traders or exchanges or uh, developers of climate projects. Instead, we are uh, providing them with a blockchain infrastructure <laughs> where all the usual functions of this market are implemented in the form of special modules and smart contracts. And introducing blockchain to those 
climate finance markets. We are eliminating their biggest problems because they are highly monopolized. They are related with governments and corporations. Uh, sometimes there is unfortunately fraud and these positive or negative externalities should be calculated in a proper way, should be verified. And this is where actually blockchain is used perfectly. This is the perfect implementation for blockchain because it brings transparency, it brings uh, traceability from the very beginning to, to the very end, and it builds trust. And that's what we need to uh, combat climate change. So uh, these are the functions of the ecosystem, which is already working, and the project started back in 2016 with the help of climate experts and uh, our genius blockchain guys. So the ecosystem is currently providing for the issuance, trade, and retirement of various green assets like carbon credits. We actually made the first ever carbon credit transaction in blockchain, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. So tracking of environmental footprints and commitments is also possible. Uh, we have our special mitigation token, which is the in-house uh, mm, currency that is used to exchange different green assets one to another. And the most exciting feature is the possibility to put into blockchain any environmental programs that have criteria and established uh, standard framework. So uh, we can blockchainize any environmental program, not withstanding its scale or scope. So starting from the Paris Agreement and uh, up to a, I don't know, corporate program or NGO environmental program. They can use our platform that is accessible through Ethereum browser and they can uh, totally transform their operations into blockchain. Uh, so this is the historical milestone in the climate finance area. This is all about the first ever uh, carbon credit transaction in blockchain. And the carbon credits were originated in Mauritius within a solar power project. It was verified against uh, uh, well-known international carbon market standards. It contributed to uh, UN sustainable goals, sustainable development goals, and it was done between a French trader and a Russian environmental uh, fund. So then we started to go further. We showcased our experience uh, at a uh, World Bank conference in Barcelona. Then we were invited to COP23 uh, in Bonn and to many other uh, UN events where we showcased the first transaction and then the issuance. And this is what actually raised a lot of attention during COP because this is the first ever uh, attempt to open the climate finance stream to the event to those who never received climate finance, I mean the remote villages of uh, Chile. So when the villagers are putting on their solar panels, uh, with the help of smart meters and our blockchain, they are being rewarded with tokens. And this is not a fantasy. This is actually what is currently happening now in Chile. This is a working pilot, and you can learn more about that. Uh, this is about another pilot uh, with a French utility company that wants to re reward its consumers for the energy saving behavior. And this shows you that actually any, um, any entity can use our infrastructure to launch their own uh, decentralized environmental programs. Uh, the latest presentation of uh, our project was in Bonn at the free uh, COP24 session. And it was presented to the second person in FCCC, Martin Frick, who admired uh, our use cases. And we have more than five use cases across the globe. And he also admired the uh, drone emissions monitoring, which is now uh, being done over the landfills in Russia. And it can also be used to uh, actually measure the emissions from oil fracking fields. And uh, UNFCCC is very interested in that. Uh, I'm finishing my short uh, uh, overview with this slide and this actually shows you um, that our ecosystem can uh, uh, actually provide infrastructure for the whole market and uh, this is also not a fantasy and we have agreed with the government of Kazakhstan 
uh, it's a country near Russia, a big uh, country where there are a lot of natural resources. They ratified Paris Agreement and they're doing a lot of smart city and sustainable development on the national level. So uh, we are now, uh, together with the World Bank and Kazakhstan government, are working on the first ever blockchain implementation for the whole market, uh, I mean the carbon market and the emissions monitoring system on a national level. So this is uh, all very exciting and um, I want to pay your attention to, to this part. Uh, you see that there are emitters and there are renewable energy projects uh, and the measurement is being made by the auditor uh, in the case of the first ever emission of uh, transaction of carbon credits in blockchain we worked with KPMG who verified the information that was put into blockchain because you know this is an important problem what, what you put there but we are uh, working on uh, uh, to substitute uh, these guys with uh, smart sensors and that's what we are doing in Chile and while doing that we are democratizing the way how uh, people and unbanked can receive the climate finance because previously it cost, uh, costed a lot to establish a climate project and receive this financing working with the high level uh, international institutions but now with the help of blockchain and these guys we are opening a new climate finance stream and uh, many remote villagers and villages uh, can receive uh, climate finance for their sustainability oriented behavior and uh, I'm finishing now and my colleagues will uh, shed you more light on how this technology is being implemented uh, in drone monitoring. Thank you.